All right, Ryan, what's on the agenda today? Pans or arms? Pans or arms. Turkish shotguns. Got it. Got it. All right. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey, how we doing? So, Turkish shotguns and pans or arms. Yeah. Uh, so, we manufacture in Turkey, but we do not make Turkish shotguns. There's a difference. I have a feeling about to learn a thing or two, and I've got a feeling you guys are going to learn a thing or two. Let's talk about pans or arms. Yes. Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms, here to bring you another manufacturer review. We've got Mark with us today, thanks for taking the time man. Absolutely, I'm glad to be here, thank you oh, so much. Dude, absolutely, we've been sharing some stories and I'm still uh, still recovering. But, uh, Panzer Arms. Yes. Panzer Arms, you guys know, uh, and quite a few of you love because we sell a crap ton of these. And uh, what are they? Ultimately, semi-auto 12 gauge shotguns that run. And uh, we've sold a lot of the BP-12s, the AR-12s, the M4s, which we'll talk about here in just a moment because we got a new one. Yes. And, uh, but man, let's just start off right from the beginning, dude. Panzer Arms, as a company, give us a little bit of background, a little bit of history. You know, what, what can you tell us about the company? So, I mean, the biggest thing about Panzer Arms is what separates us from every other importer, manufacturer, or facility that does work in Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, we started off the same, which is having batches of firearms offered to us for importation yeah. and immediately found that everything that was available wasn't worth investing in mm -hmm. if there was any future involved. Right. So what we did was we went over to Turkey, started spending a lot of time there, working with a lot of different manufacturing facilities, a lot of designers, and subcomponent manufacturers and found that the biggest issue with Turkish shotguns is that a manufacturing facility rarely does truly manufacturing. It's mm. mostly subcomponent manufacturers instead. Okay, yeah. Um, they're just assembling someone else's parts, which means that you can never guarantee the quality of the subcomponent right. or the assembly. And then we talk about things like customer service, warranties, and availability of parts. Yeah. So what we did is we scaled it back to the very beginning, which is subcomponent and raw material. Yeah. Uh, we track okay. from raw material. We source from the same place and have been for the past five years. We only use high quality materials. Uh, all of our subcomponents, short of springs mm -hmm. and hardware, are all manufactured on site. We do our own coatings, 100% of mm -hmm. our assemblies. We only use the same foreign exporter. That's cool. Yeah. It, it is, because it means that whether your bullpup is two years old, five years old, or encroaching on 10 years old in mm -hmm. the future, it's got the same components manufactured under the same standard right. in the same facility by the same man on the same machine. That's that's pretty impressive, really. Yeah. And the fact that you, what you're saying, too, is, you know, other than, like, some of the springs, things like that, some of the really small, fine stuff, you guys do... You make them. Yeah, yeah one hundred percent. Even yeah. even the injection molding for the plastic. Oh wow. Yeah. So okay, now that's that's really neat. Now my experience with Panzer Arms has always been positive. I mean, you know, they're affordable semi-auto twelve gauges, magazine fed for the most part, unless we're talking about a couple of the other different models. But I mean, they they just run, and you know, obviously the magazine style is one that's pretty universal, and so you don't have to go find a bunch of proprietary stuff that's Correct. out there, which is pretty nice. And like the AR twelve, if you guys haven't shot one of these yet. They're quick, you know, as fast as you can pull the trigger, you can run this thing and the, the ergonomics and the design behind it is going to be something really familiar to all of us for the most part because it's just AR controls. Uh, other than the actual charging handle being attached to the bolt instead of having, you know, your, your standard charging handle back here. This is super ergonomic, easy enough, locks right on back on an empty magazine as you can see here. Slap that, bolt goes home, mag release right where it is, bam, easy day. So the ergonomics alone, like I said, I can... I can run this pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I really like the rail. I like how it's filling and everything. It allows them to get that thumb over bore and just really drive this thing, especially with AR sight heights or AR height sights is what I'm yes. trying to say. Yes. So like I said, my experience, AR 12s, a lot of fun. And then there comes something that's just really cool. The BP 12, the bullpup, because how many semi-auto 12 gauges that are mag fed are also bullpups? Not a whole lot. And, they're, and then enter, you know, Panzer Arms. So this one is a little bit newer, Correct. a newer model. Tell us some of the features on this that we won't see like on some of the older generations. So what we had originally was the BP-12, Gen 1 and Gen 2. That's been a platform and a staple. Everyone absolutely loves it. What we needed rather than continuing 
to make adaptations to a fantastic platform is we needed two that were similar but have very different qualities. Yeah. This is our brand new EGX 500. What segregates it from our, Bullpup, our BP-12 series is gas system regulation. Okay. With this model, there's a button up front that uh, is instant gas system regulation. You can go from standard rounds to your really super high velocity one ounce slugs, yeah. your 15 ball double watt that's one and three quarters of an ounce with a simple pull and push of that gas system button. And what's super nice is if it gets pulled the whole way out by accident, it's already in its high setting and your gun still functions correctly. Yeah, and it takes a little bit of force doing that, so yes. it's not like something you're gonna accidentally do. You yeah, say, it's yeah. easy to pop back and forth, far yeah. harder to draw completely out. Right, and so it even says HV right there, yes. high velocity, and that just means the gas system's open, ready to run. Correct, yeah. and what's nice is all the controls on this are ambidextrous, charging handle, gas system regulation, safety, and uh, magazine catch. Yeah, which is pretty awesome. So everything yeah. right back here, mag release right here underneath the bolt release. Yep. Cool, we got the mag release on the opposite side, easy enough here. So with that being said, I mean the charging handle, you said you can even pop out as well. Correct, right? okay. and we actually did a little bit of a design change on the ejection port shield to help with lowered deflection rather than horizontal defle deflection, Right. because we really do want to cater to our left-handed customers. That is really neat. and. They are fun. Yeah. I've done it just because it's yeah. absolutely ridiculous, but throwing a drum mag back here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously with the drum mag, you're doing some some funny things with your bullpup, but at the same time, that was one thing. I think it was SHOT Show like two, three years ago when we went, and uh, we actually had one with the drum mag on the wall. We had M1 Grams on the wall. We had all sorts of stuff. People saw that and thought, I yeah. want a picture with that. Yeah, because you're blinded to everything else. Yeah. This platform is really specialized for self-defense. Yeah. People absolutely love it. And now that we have both our iconic, iconic series that everyone knows and loves, and now we get into something that I like to affectionately term a legacy series. Yeah, This is something that you don't worry about warranty length. You don't worry about wear parts. You know that this yeah. firearm is gonna be in your safe, ready to rock and roll for your kids many years down the line. Yeah, which is super freaking cool. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm I'm excited to see where you guys are going too, and uh, one one that flew off the shelves as far as the product goes was the uh, the Panzer M4. Yes. So once Benelli yes. uh, let the I guess the patent run out. Correct. Uh, you guys had the dual gas piston design, took that and said, let's make one. Correct. And so we've had a couple of generations now, right? Yes, there there have been. Okay. Um, it's taken us uh, several years to get to the point where we're the only M4 on the market mm -hmm. that we can assure every part down to even thread size and pattern is a true clone with the Benelli M4, but with the exact same high quality as the Italian made Benelli and a price that we can actually afford. So, first of all, exciting. Yes. Secondly, you may be telling me I can take any and all Benelli can, aftermarket accessories, throw it on here. Absolutely, you, not just accessories, but subcomponents. You can take the Argo system out of the Italian made Benelli yeah. and put it in our, our Panzer and vice versa. Our trigger components manufactured in the same facilities. You can take the trigger pack out, swap it with, with the Benelli, vice versa. Our rails on top, same thread patterns through the receivers. Our buffer tubes with our new series come adjustable stock ready with a three position buffer rather than a smooth buffer, buffer like all the other Turkish yeah. clones, right. rather than really outfitting your shotgun with what it needs to be compared to the Benelli and not compared to other Turkish shotguns. Does that also include like the magazine extensions, things like that? Everything, so, so thread, thread size is the exact same. There's nothing that you can't find aftermarket that isn't gonna go just the same on your Panzer M4 of our newest edition as it is the Benelli M4. The big difference is affordability, yeah. cost. Same yeah. exact high quality components, and I can honestly say better QC compared to Benelli. Look, look at some reviews online, they've got some issues that are easily addressed. Okay. And all that takes is customer feedback, and that's why we've gotten to the point where we are, is because we value every bit of the feedback, every bit of it means something, and it translates into what you see today. So I guess I'll quit asking if you can do this with a Benelli, do that with a Benelli, and whatever type of accessory, because it's just gonna fit. Correct. So Correct. that is super exciting. So tell us a little bit more about this, materials, finish, all that, because we are used to seeing like the all black one. Correct. Right, uh, so now we've got this guy that looks, you know, it's got a nice little two-tone look to it, but typically I 
my initial thought, anytime I see a finish like this, yes. I think uh, corrosion resistance and marine. Am I correct in this? You're 100% correct. The area that we found lacking from customer feedback from the past year of finally having a quality M4 clone was, yeah. hey, here's what we've been looking for in Benelli. We don't have this option in Pienzer. This is what we want. Yeah. So naturally, we went to a very nice high corrosion resistance coating, and we call it our marine grade. That's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, well, we need to make sure that we're staying on top of what's actually wanted yeah. and not being behind that curve. That is neat. Now, I have done um, a comparison, like how fast can I empty it? Because this is what, five in the tube, I think? Correct. Um, uh, and, and five, five in the tube, but with ghost loading, you can do seven, seven yep, rather so I've than done, six. Yep, so I've done the ghost loading and all, and I've, I think I've cleared like seven rounds in either just under or right at a second. I can't remember, I know we did the speed test, or maybe it was five rounds. Point nine seven, five shots under one second. For a 12 gauge shooting high brass, I mean, it just freaking runs. And actually, yeah. let's talk about that really quick because a lot of you will say, I bought this Panzer AR-12 and I can't get it to run. Yes. And next thing you know, you're saying you're running some low brass bird shot through it and you're like, it's probably not gonna work out too good for you. Absolutely. Uh, run some high brass stuff. You gotta run in some stuff that's gonna develop the pressures needed to run that. Yeah. Uh, your low brass and everything is going to be great for your pump actions and all that. Um, the, uh, the the one other thing too though is like a, a lot of people I think of different demographics. Uh, somebody that's looking for a home defense shotgun. Yes. Right? Uh, as you know as nifty as these are sometimes you're like hey semi-autos are great and everything but I can't handle the recoil. I want to run some of those um, uh, like the Aguila or the Federal, um, uh, the short shells. The minis, yeah. yeah the mini shells you know. Now do you guys offer something that runs those effectively? So actually for 2023, we have some really wonderful models that we've been r and ding for two years. Okay. There's some really nice stuff coming out. Uh, we're gonna end up doing a Ithaca 37 clone called our PA 37. Okay. And it runs flawlessly without modification on both Aguilia and Federal Minis. So, okay, because I know for a while, if you were buying these mini shells, you needed to get like an adapter for either 870 or 590 or whatever. C correct, and the adaptation is where we run into issue. We don't want you to have to buy something, then buy something, then buy something. Right. I wanna give you a platform that runs how you expect it to right out of the box. And that's also running still like regular size shells too? Correct, absolutely. Yeah, uh, okay. from, from the minis cool. up to the three inch magnet. Yeah. Wow, yeah. all right, so that's pretty nifty. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, all of that is super impressive. I really hope I've answered some of y'all's questions, especially because like, dude, customer service, I know they light up all the time about that because these are super popular, they're affordable. People love the idea of saying, I've got an AR that shoots 12 gas, absolutely. right? And so they're like, yeah, absolutely, I want that. And then they go buy you know, the cheapest box of ammo that they can find and, and it's like, look, hear me out, spend a little bit more on those shot shells, get the high brass stuff. It doesn't even have to be that expensive ammo. Correct. Just get the high brass stuff that develops those pressures and this stuff is gonna run it, which is yeah. great. Yeah. Now, what about the future? What all does PW Arms, now that, because obviously I need to talk to you when I see you at SHOT Show. Yes. Uh, so we'll, we'll come by the booth, we'll talk about what you guys got going on and everything, because I'm sure there's some things that you might not be able to save right now. Correct, there, okay. there's actually three on the board that I'm really excited about and can't wait to debut with Classic Firearms. Okay, is there anything that you can like hint at? So a few of our models, some stuff that you alluded to really liking was slimmer profiles, yeah. mm -hmm. better triggers, yeah. maybe some stuff that uh, you can get out multiple rounds on a platform that you're not used to being able to do with a high rate of fire, but still is regulation free, things like that. So something that my, may or may not like bang bang? Yeah, stuff like that might be in, a, in our very close future. Let me know what your thoughts about that is down in the comments section. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I don't know what it might be, but I am excited. Yes. I am yes. excited, all right? So, uh, Mark, again, I re really enjoy hearing a little bit of the background and also some of the quality that goes into Great. Panzer Arms, you know, because, uh, I mean, you and I were talking a little bit off camera about some of the things that you saw that you that you see within, within Turkey and everything yeah. that, you know, it's like, hey, uh, what was it you were saying, you know, something about like, hey, you know, uh, once, you know, the, the sickness hit, yes. um, you know, everybody was trying to like, you said something about the the, the, herd, the sheep herders or something like that. Uh, so pe you people wanna... who aren't normally in the manufacturing uh, realm were quitting their jobs, yeah. buying subcomponents, poorly assembling shotguns, selling them back to the manufacturer who then bid them out to an exporter. And what you have is shotguns that aesthetically look great, but yeah. are poorly assembled, 
with some components that can't be tracked to where, where or how they were made. Right. And unfortunately, that's the scourge that we're, we're getting over finally, is the absolute flood of Turkish shotguns that have a Turkish name, but not what always used to be Turkish yeah. quality. Interesting. And we're making sure that we have systems set up to bring that back so that it benefits everyone from exporter, importer, manufacturer, yeah. and end user most importantly. That's, well, that's good to know too, because I mean, it's kind of like, hey, you know, before you buy, go out there and make sure that you are buying from a reputable brand, especially yes. if the, or manufacturer, especially if this is something that you might use to defend your life with in a home Correct. defense situation. Correct. I'm gonna wanna, I'm gonna want to see testing and everything, which, I mean, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I mean, if it's you know corrosion resistant and everything else like that, I mean, I kind of want to torture test one. Yeah. As, as, oh you know, please! As, so, you know, I'm just saying, especially for the price point. I think, you know, I think I think I might Ben maybe you might be able to afford this because a Benelli, you know, like the M4, right? I mean, dude, two, two, three thousand dollars. Correct, and that's appropriate for certain demographics. We want to cater to everyone. Right. We want to make sure everyone gets what they need yeah. the first time right off the bat. And uh, let's just say the price range for these, because it's the internet, prices might change, so I'm not going to mention exactly what it may or may not be, but let's just say you're going to find this for way below $1,000. Is that accurate? Very, yes. Okay. Yes. There you go. Yes. We'll, we'll leave it off at that. Uh, now, one other thing too is another thing you mentioned also, because one thing that I've been asked before is like, hey, would you actually trust the Panzer M4? You know, like if you had to take one in the battle, would you would you honestly just say Benelli or Panzer? You know, and sometimes it's like, look, dude, I get I get where the question's coming from, and I'm going to take what's issue, which is my Benelli M4. That's what I would be carrying to battle. What can I afford that I would trust my life with? However, at the end of the day. I think it's kind of obvious, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, that's that's ultimately how I feel about that. Like the materials you said are still coming from Germany, right? Correct. So, I mean, so the metals that you're getting are coming from Germany and stuff like that. So, and like I said, I need to run the ever living crap out of it. Yes. And uh, I think we'll probably do that a little bit later. We can probably throw in some footage there and here. With that, Mark, man, dude, hey. I'm looking forward to going to the range and shoot this stuff. I, I can't thank Classic Firearms enough. You really, you really made these firearms worth having for people. I, well, that means a lot. Thank, thank you. you. I, I really appreciate that. And like I said, I try to come off as you know as transparent and and I'm honest with you guys. Uh, you know, if if something doesn't work out right, we will go back to the manufacturer and say, hey, not comfortable doing this. And uh, sometimes that manufacturer either you know, walks away, never hear from them again. And a lot of times they'll say, cool, thank you. Try this now. We're After interested some time. in evolution. Again, we want to make sure that five years down the road and 10, ten years down the road, we're still offering you the exact yeah. same products with the exact same components in addition to whatever our newest lines are. Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. So, yeah, I'm excited to run this, guys. Uh, Mark, thanks again for coming in. Guys, let us know what you think down in the comment section below and check out our current giveaway while you're perusing the site uh, because, well, we like to give away a lot of guns and support the Second Amendment the best way that we can, which, by the way, go and support organizations like Gun Owners of America. Anyway, code word down at the bottom of the screen for that giveaway. Don't miss out, guys, and as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.